Hey guys, Mike with Financeable here. It's Friday, which means it's time to answer the weekly challenge question. By the way, if you like these videos and find them helpful, definitely hit the like button down below and subscribe. We have a lot more coming. Let's hop in here. So this week's question is basically a paper LBO question, and we're gonna walk through it step by step. The one thing I wanna note here is we're asking you to calculate an IRR, and if you hang out to the end, I'll show you a trick for calculating that, and it'll make your life a lot easier when you're working through these problems. But let's, let's look at the question first. So our question today is, we have a business that was purchased via LBO uh, at 10 times EBITDA. The company generates $20 of EBITDA. The lenders offered 6X funding for the deal. The company generates $40 of cash flow over the life of the LBO over the five years. And then the company sold at an enterprise value at the end of five years at $280. And the question is, what's the approximate IRR for the private equity fund or the sponsors who, who invested in this deal? So let's take a look here. So before we dive in, just a quick note, if you're new to LBO type questions, uh, the steps that we are about to go through are covered in our Walk Me Through an LBO video, and I definitely would check that video out. I'll put a, a link up above so you can check that out. Uh, but with that said, let's hop in and work through the step by step. So we're going to basically work through Walk Me Through an LBO piece by piece, but ultimately calculate the returns at the end. So to begin with, let's calculate the purchase price. And we were told that the company has $20 of EBITDA at the outset of the deal, and it was purchased at 10 times EBITDA. So we can conclude from that that this business was purchased for $200. In step two, we're gonna calculate the debt funding for the purchase. So we can take the EBITDA that we have from up above. Remember that debt funding in an LBO is, is a function of the EBITDA produced or a multiple of EBITDA produced by the business. And we were told that the lenders provided six times funding and the way that that's typically expressed is debt to EBITDA. So that's, that's kind of implied in the question. And what we're gonna conclude from this is that with the $20 of EBITDA and the six times funding, that the debt funding of purchase was $120. Now, in step three, we can then calculate to the equity the sponsors put into the deal. So there's the purchase price and then the lender funding and the sponsors have to fund the remainder. So we take the purchase price of 200, we back out the debt funding provided by the lenders, and then the difference between the two is our sponsor equity or purchase equity that was put into the deal by the private equity fund. Now we have the outset of the deal completed and we can move on to the exit. So over in step four, we'll calculate the debt that we have at exit. And remember that the exit debt is basically your starting debt less the cash generated by the business over the course of the LBO. So we had at the beginning of the deal, $120 of debt and the business generated uh, $40 of cash flow uh, which we got in the question uh, prompt up above. And, oh, should make that negative, sorry. And so the debt at exit is $80. So when we sell the business, we have $80 of debt to pay down. With that completed, we can now figure out how much equity the private equity fund that invested here will get when they sell. So they have an exit equity, I'm sorry, an exit um, enterprise value of 280, and exit debt of 80. And so we can conclude that after paying off debt, the sponsor or private equity fund will receive $200 when they sell the business. So now we can move on to the final step here, which is just calculating our returns. So we have exit equity of 200. The sponsors contributed 80 of equity at the outset. And uh, we can use that to calculate our multiple of invested capital or MOIC, also called MOIC. And that's just gonna be calculated as the equity we get back, the dollars back, divided by the equity contributed at the outset of the deal. So our MOIC is two and a half times. Now, the way to mathematically calculate the IRR here is to use the Kager formula. So we take the two and a half times and we're gonna raise it to one divided by five minus one. And that's gonna give us an IRR of 20.1%. So the answer, to this week's question is 20%. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, Mike, I can't you know, do a, a Kager calculation in my head in the middle of an interview and I have good news for you. Uh, you don't have to. So down below, I've put in a little table to share with you, which is a set of rules of thumb that make answering these questions a lot easier. So generally speaking, most sponsors are targeting kind of a 15 to 25% IRR. And we can use the multiples of invested capital to approximate to an IRR. And it works out roughly proportionally across these multiples. So the rule of thumb to remember here is a two times MOIC is a 15% IRR over five years. Two and a half is a 20% IRR over five years. 
and three times is 25% IRR over five years. And you can kind of proportionally kind of work between those. So if, if you have you know, 2.25, it's, it's gonna be approximately 17 and a half. It's not gonna be exactly 17 and a half, but you can say it's kind of roughly in that range. So this rule of thumb allows you to quickly calculate IRRs over a five year period. And there's a similar rule of thumb for three year deals as well. And it's roughly 25, 35, and 45%. I know the numbers aren't as exact as the five year numbers, but it's roughly 25, 35, 45, give or take for a three year deal as opposed to a five year deal. Most people in the private equity world have these rules of thumb mem memorized so that they can quickly get to the answer for IRR for a deal and see if, if the deal pencils or makes sense. So I wanted to share that rule of thumb with you. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for you to get, get to the answer with these questions. Uh, and hopefully this all makes more sense now. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to check out these videos and for participating in the questions. If you find these videos helpful, definitely hit the like button down below and subscribe. We have a lot more coming. Hope you have a nice weekend and take care.